Hi and welcome to my advanced tips and tricks guide for other side. I am Iken and in this video I'm going to show you how to optimize your fighting performance inside and outside of the battle to give you better results without breaking a sweat. And if you like this kind of content you'll find plenty of that on my channel. Just hit a subscription and you won't miss any future things and let's get going. So first thing I want to talk about is the traits section and how we can manipulate that a little bit more closely. So first off there are traits that are not easy not that easy to uh, work around. There's uh, arrogance which uh, increases your crit damage but decreases your XP gain. Don't mind too much about that. It just happens when you're playing without taking damage. But what I want to talk about here is the a part of well insert daughter's name here this is a massive buff and um should be definitely mentioned at this point so we're going to check out grace my new soul slinger here and i'm going to regenerate her even though she's full hp why because i can and it's actually useful so if we look here if i would sacrifice a shield bearer onto her her hp would increase by a whopping amount of five 500 units almost and uh, some initiative push resistance would be applied too. the stats get higher the higher the level of the sacrificed daughter are so if we look at the stats here that's a one-third increase of health that's big it's really big but if we look um, at other units let's uh, check out the blade master we get here a part of true that's a flat-out damage increase and critical damage increase. You can buff the damage of your Soul Slingers and other units insanely by tossing a Blade Master onto them. And last but not least, if you sacrifice a Soul Slinger, you get a big dodge bonus and critical chance bonus. Keep in mind, you can only have one part of uh, whatever daughter um, bonus on every daughter alive. So um, choose well. I personally like to go for, of course, the flat out damage because Alpha Strike is big in this game, but you can modify the stats of your daughters with this little trick very effectively. And depending on how much Vitae you have, you can do really, really good things with that. So let's get to the uh, skills section. I wanna talk about the skills you can pick for your uh, daughters here in general and what to work around that so always keep in mind these skills that cost hp are usually quite effective and for the soul slinger the shadow round is one of the biggest skills available in game right now the wrathful rain skill which is just a evasive shot basically can't can't even closely com uh, be compared with that so this skill is really really big and i'm going to show you guys later why and um when you pick new skills, I'm also, I also want to talk about Spirit Haste, which uh, is also a pretty nasty skill, which just gives your allies initiative boosts, which just makes them act quicker. And here goes the same thing, the new Projected Force skill just uh, doesn't beat it. Um, when it comes down to Shield Bearers and Blade Masters, um, it's quite a similar thing, but some of these reaction skills on the shield bearer and the blade master are as of now not as powerful as those compared to the soul slingers at least between level two and five so always be aware of that i personally love to pick up the lightning strike for um the blade masters and the shield bash for the shield bearers because here goes the same thing blacksmith's grace sounds good in theory but in practice, most of the time it's better to just avoid the, the attack like before it happens with an intercepting round or something like that. So Shield Bash instead gives you the ability to shove units around and that's quite big and useful. But overall, you can complete the game just with Soul Slingers alone or just with Shield Bearers alone. It's up to you to work your strategy around that. And to do that uh, well, I want to talk about the memories here a little bit too. So with the memories, always use the flat damage memories for low damage skills and the percentage damage skills for high damage skills. It's just in the math. This way it's the most effective. But I want to talk about other skills too. The crit chance memories are overall pretty lackluster, but the really good things happening here are... Um, the memories which either manipulate the enemy's armor 
or your allies or enemies initiative. These are extremely powerful because the spirit haste skill costs you 30 action points and gives you 20 initiative boost but at the same time if you are able to um, change the initiative units further with attacks on the enemies pushing their initiative downwards or increasing the initiative or your units like uh, well here I sadly don't have any of those you can uh, easily produce endless turns with skills like the spirit haste so choose your memories wisely and uh, stick with them it's re really really powerful to have things like these here to disassociate decrease the targets armor by 80 points that's just very very powerful and you can stick those to a lot of uh, skills and more often than not what I want to bring as the bottom line here and the real advanced tip here is damage is more often than not the most in the least interesting option initiative and armor manipulations are quite more interesting and can win you fights enormously easily easy so that's uh, what I want to talk about when we're managing the daughters here. One more thing that's uh, pretty important to me is the codex here. Um, in the codex you find very, very precise and useful information about your enemy's behavior. There's always a section which uh, describes the enemy's behavior in detail. Use that especially when you got beaten by some unit which uh, just uh, destroyed you in one go or if you're str um, struggling with some units here you find vital information on how to deal with those guys and use it you won't find these information in the game though while you're in combat you can't look them up so you have to do that before the combat so that's why I want to point that out so uh, precisely because information is key you can improve your uh, fighting plan so much by only knowing for example that this unit will always try to keep your distance to the daughters if you want to lure it by waiting you won't be doing a good job there so let's get to a combat finally let's do some action I'm going to uh, go for a simple hunt here and I'm going to bring the Soul Slinger ladies, but I'm going to bring alongside also a Shield Bearer, so we're not going to play too meta here. But as the things are right now, um, Soul Slingers ha have the lowest risk component and a very high utility component, and that's why a lot of players love this unit so much. And I do as well. It's really fun to play with them, and I'm Begging going to show you how. And alongside, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, how to improve your combat um, in general. So first turns are, as usual, you want to check out what enemies are on the table and what they can do. Whenever there's something new to you, like here this larva was pretty new to me, check out their skills. Check them out closely. You're going to understand a lot more when you know what's happening when these skills go down. It's really important because in this game the um, most monsters are able to two-shot your uh, daughters easily if you don't manage it properly. Alright, so here in this situation I know that uh, the larva is one unit you want to burst down as quickly as possible. So I want to get through this uh, turn of modesties here first so I'm going to move her um, deep forward into enemy territory and I'm going to activate the intercepting round and the uh, shadow round right away because I know we're going to get attacked here but I'm actually playing on that so here goes the first thing when you're gonna go for intercepting round or shadow round preferably do that when you want to send your daughters into a burst action anyways because this skill lasts until the daughter acts the next time so you get the most benefit out of your spend hp if you uh, make sure that these skills last a 100 uh, time units and not only 50 so that's one thing you got to take care of and the downside about that is it's making your uh, units more immobile but believe me this only looks like a downside in the, at the first glance so now we're moving ahead 
same thing here i'm going to move forward here with joy and we're going to slaughter everybody but but before i take a single shot now i'm going to activate the shadow round before i attack and uh well the intercepting round is um well i'm going to do it anyways we're going to explain later why um and now we start attacking i'm not going to use spirit haste here because i don't have any need to and let's see what happens so we take those shots shadow round triggers on modesty letting her attack too but because modesty took a shot um the shadow round on joy would have procced another time sadly it wasn't visible here so let's see if i can make it visible here so modesty takes a shot and because modesty took a shot joy's shadow round now triggers so always use those shadow rounds before you act and not afterwards it's a loss of free attacks if you don't so we uh took down those nasties and now i have a uh, double intercepting rounds on joy and modesty and i started the uh before i attack with the intercepting rounds because if your enemies retaliate in any form the intercepting round will go off in that way Sometimes enemies have that uh, behavior of retaliating to things, and it's really cool if you're able to just uh, toss it away because you acted uh, smart and you acted beforehand. So uh, here goes some uh, skill there, and you see the intercepting round triggers right away. There goes the shadow round in consequence of the down. intercepting shot, and it's quite insane how easily the soul stinkers take control over a fight without you um taking too much action here so works of course also with other units so uh the shield bearers attacks would uh, provoke the shadow rounds here as well so that's uh some advanced gameplay which definitely will uh amp up your um performance by a lot because the most complicated thing about these uh HP skills is that you have to plan them carefully, but as soon as you start to uh, collect some some actual experience with that and uh, make less mistakes with it, you're going to have awesome results out of that. And don't be shy to experiment with that, don't be shy to make mistakes. I did a lot of useless shadow rounds and intercepting bullets before I uh, was able to pull this off. Um, halfway um reliably so it takes some time to get a feeling for uh these moves but um this works quite decently and this is the reason why i would always um say victory. bring at least one um soul slinger in your squad because they're that good preferably two or three if you want to go cheesy but these units are really interacting so well with your other units that basically if you're playing your soul slingers right you can do whatever you want to with the rest of that fight so we are seeing here that we're having the situation perfectly under control sure i sacrificed some hp but most of the time if the reaction skill triggers and if you're making good use out of that you're most of the time taking way less damage than uh, compared to with, with what would happen if you would just let your enemies uh, do whatever they want to. So that's the thing. And always there's another thing I want to talk about. Avoid using your uh, reaction skills if there's no use to. Avoid using your full turns if you can, uh, if there's a chance to. Because Acting as often and as uh, quick as possible in this game is so powerful that you don't want to lose your turns. Like only go into burst if you want, if you know why. Like finishing off your enemies or using some super effective uh, reaction skills that have to last for a long time might be the ways to go. So I'm going to top off this video now with. Um, some things that I learned along the way how to manage um, my progress. If you want if to go long for a, a long haul, no if you want to go for a run that uh, beats the most bosses as possible, try to delay your Another boss fights as long as possible or as long as you're able this. to uh, <laughs> to bear with it because um, you can't grind those synapses and get vitae and uh, shards out of that. Mm -hmm way more than you actually forced to by the game and whenever you um, restart your game 
um, in your graveyard or cemetery are you all your Remember former daughters courage. and you get those resurrection tokens out of some remembrances and you can Remember. resurrect high power daughters in your fo in your future runs like um joy i picked up out of my last run so she's already level six pick up a certain number of daughters that you power level to have them available for the really really uh, big and bad fights because there are enough remembrances um available for resurrections well i didn't have that one yet but you see here discovering for Discovering a boss unlocked each time a resurrection token, so I'm pretty sure the third boss will do the same. So, level them up, use them as your power squad, have one power squad where you allocate all the most powerful memories and you sacrifice the most powerful daughters into them to give them uh, powerful part traits and yeah, that's just uh, how you can make sure that you're having a squad which packs a nasty punch which makes your game a lot easier. So I hope that was uh, some in some form helpful to you and enjoyable. Thanks for watching, friends, and stay tuned for more other side content. There's going to be more in the future. Until then, have a very nice time, and goodbye. <laughs>